Cricket presents The Campfire, and today we are taking a deep dive into 4-5A Division I. The teams in this primarily Fort Worth ISD district include Arlington Heights, Northside, Pascal, Polytech, South Hills, Trimble Tech, O.D. Wyatt, Chisholm Trail, and Saginaw. Let's analyze this district in our film session. It's a land of opportunity in 4-5A Division I with playoff spots up for grabs. Teams that aren't used to winning can stack up some W's during district play. Take Saginaw, for example. Three wins in the past four years, yet the Rough Riders, with their experience in skill positions, should be a favorite for a district crown. The combination of quarterback Roman Morales to wide receiver Aiden Collier will be in their third year starting together for Saginaw and should put up big numbers. Arlington Heights has playoff experience and should be a postseason team as well. Running back Carson James scored 13 touchdowns as a sophomore for the Yellow Jackets last year. Chisholm Trail and Pascal come down from 6A and should be players in this district as well. Pascal returns dual threat Jashawn Thomas, while Chisholm Trail could get some big numbers from receiver Jordan Freeman. Northside could make a push behind DeAndre Montgomery in the backfield. South Hills, Trimble Tech, and Polytech will definitely compete for wins, but may be on the outside looking in for a postseason spot. The Campfire is presented by Cricket. Smile, you're on Cricket. We love easy. Four. Yeah. Give your taste buds that winning feeling with the new boneless Whata Wings from Whataburger. Crispy, tender bites of chicken tossed in your choice of sauce. The Campfire is brought to you by your Texas Kubota dealers, home of the number one selling subcompact tractor in Texas. Kubota, together we do more. For an even deeper look at 4-5A Division I, here's producer Ward Fasold and insider Matt Diggs with the District Breakdown. All right, it's District Breakdown time. We are heading to Fort Worth to talk a little 4-5A Division II. My guy Diggs, he's, he's always ready. I'm ready. And there's playoff spots to be had, so you know these Fort Worth teams are ready, plus Saginaw. Boy, you look up and down this list, there's not a lot of playoff history in the recent few years with a lot of these teams, except for maybe Arlington Heights and O.D. Wyatt's made it a couple of times. Talk to me about how you even begin to dissect this district and who you might see come out of there. You know, I, 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 when, I, when I do with this kind of a district, because we've got 6A teams coming down, we've got 5A teams moving around and, and trying to figure all this out, and it's a completely new alignment. I kind of take what I kind of consider a computer-based model with this, and, and I take kind of their finishing part, part from last year from a couple of different models. Then I put the digs effect on it. I was like, okay, well, I think this was dumb. I think this was good. And then I kind of create my own computer model, and then I kind of look at what they've got coming back and, and what I like and their coaching staff and then ward i have a district breakdown for you ready ready to go right there right, and right. it's fresh for you and the team i like at number one in this district is arlington heights this is a team that has built up a little bit of tradition it's my favorite aesthetic school by the way and anytime yeah. you drive down i-30 you see arlington heights you know you're seeing yeah. something special i love arlington heights but they've gotten some of those players back from other schools yeah. and now all of a sudden that offensive line is consistently good and, and they're good in the in the and the foundation. Now you got a running back who can give them that identity that Brian Furch gave them. 13 touchdowns award as a freshman. Yeah. I like Arlington Heights to be able to replicate that. Take me on the Diggs trail and tell me who the top nine are in this district. One, my number one school, Arlington Heights. Fort Worth Pascal, the Pascal Panthers, I've got them at number two. The Rough Riders, Saginaw, number three. Chisholm Trail, uh, Coach Holmes is going to be friends with me again at number four. Fort Worth Wyatt, the Chaparrales at number five. Northside, the Steers at number six. South Hills, the Scorpions. I like saying all the mascots right now. I know you I'm do. Really excited. Because, that, because how can I not say the parents? Right. Fort Worth Poly at number eight. And then Trimble Tech at number nine. All right, brother, we're going to move on to 5-6 or 5-5A Division One up in Frisco, moving from Fort Worth to Frisco and talk about those teams. But, Diggsy, man, I always appreciate you joining me. Thank you for having us, and I understand we might have a special guest next week. That's right, special guest. We'll see what happens. See. We'll post the entire breakdown segment this Wednesday on our social media pages. Now let's take a look at some game changers and our players on the rise brought to you by Parker University. At Northside, DeAndre Montgomery was a first-team all-district selection at running back for the Steers. That should translate nicely in the new 4-5A Division I. 
As a junior, he ran for 764 yards and nine touchdowns. Montgomery also caught 16 passes out of the backfield. DeAndre runs a 4-5-40 and will be an impact player in this district. A lot of talent has left the O.D. Wyatt roster, but athlete Javorski Lane Jr. will still be a playmaker for the Chaps. Lane has the pedigree as his father by the same name was a standout fullback at Texas A&M and went on to play for the Miami Dolphins. Javorski Jr. was all over the field for the Chaparrales as a sophomore as he saw time as a running back, wide receiver, and quarterback. While he excels on the gridiron, he may be more talented on the diamond, where he was on the 15 and under USA team and is committed to play baseball at Texas A&M. Saginaw's Aiden Collier is a catch-and-go type receiver for the Rough Riders. Collier caught 23 balls for 526 yards and four touchdowns for a 1-9 Saginaw team. Now in a more favorable district, Collier should get more opportunities to make explosive plays on the gridiron. Aiden plays in all three phases of the game as he also had a pick six and a kickoff return for a score as well. Another receiver who could benefit from a favorable district is South Hill's Luis Sanchin. Last year, despite the Scorpions going winless, Sanchin was second team all district as a receiver. Luis has good concentration and can turn small gains into big ones. Look for Sanchin to be a big threat in the middle of the field for South Hills. Players on the Rise is brought to you by Parker University. Do you or your student want a career training the world's best athletes? Check out our bachelor's degree in strength and human performance today. I was paying too much money in 5G, and then my son suggested that I should try cricket. It was easy to switch. And we love easy. Four. Yeah. Smile, you're on cricket. The Campfire is brought to you by Golden Chick. One taste and you're golden. Our Ward Fasol cut up to Saginaw head coach Mike Peters to talk about his Rough Riders in our Media Day segment. All right, it is Media Day time. We are talking 4-5A Division One with Saginaw head coach Mike Peters. And coach, when these uh, when these districts came out, man, there had to be a decent feeling in your in your heart because you're no longer jacking around with Alitos and Denton Ryans that are going four or five rounds deep. And you have a chance to to do th some things here just to, to maybe kind of give me your initial reaction when you saw the district you're in and and how you kind of feel about your team looking at this district uh you know uh i kind of had an idea that we that we may uh in the past we've been in that district before um you know i know that we've made a lot of progress as a team so you know getting closer to the alitos and the den ryans and people like that was something that, that was already in the plans and for this one to come out this way, you know, um, you know, it was one of those deals that I think that our fans maybe uh, had a better feeling about it, but you know, there's some dang good football and good ball coaches in the district. So um, I'm just uh, glad to still be here and have a chance and with our team moving forward. Not only is that, but now you have a, a, a super realistic chance and probably maybe even one of the favorites to take a district title. It's got to be kind of a, a new way to look at things during the off season where you have the teams coming in and say, oh, coach, man, we just, we just, we got shut out by this team next year and we got them again this year. It's, this is, I'm going to get, I'm trying to get better here, but it's, it's kind of hard, but now you can really preach some things. Is that kind of how you feel? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. You know, um, off season, you know, from February on, it's had a different feel to it because, you know, as much as you talk kids up, you know, you're right. There, There's a few teams in this state that, you know, it's hard for anybody to match up with. And, and when they're not on your schedule anymore, you know, it's something that the kids notice and, and the coaches notice. And, and just that, uh, you know, each and every week for 10 weeks in a row, you're going to have an opportunity to compete. Uh, and if you play well enough, you got a chance to win. That's always a big, you know, booster going through offseason, working into the summer. Uh, I appreciate you joining me, Coach Peters. We, we will talk to you and see you guys later down this road. Yes, sir. Anytime, man. You just get a hold of them. You can catch the entire interview Friday on our social media channels. That's going to do it for this week's Campfire. Next week, we'll analyze 5-5-A Division One. Until then, have a great week, everybody.